Madness continues here on CBS, NCAA Basketball Championship. That second round play from the Pyramid in Memphis. Number nine seed in the South, Fresno State takes on the defending national champions, the Michigan State Spartans. Earlier today, Gonzaga knocked off Indiana State and the 12th seeded Bulldogs moved on and they are awaiting the winner of this matchup between the Bulldogs from California and the Spartans. Starting lineups on the left side, Fresno State, Swillis, Jeffries, Eli, Maddox and Porter, Michigan State with Hudson, Anagonye, Thomas, Richardson, and Bell. Now two coaches that know a little something about national championships, both have a title to their credit. It was Tarkinian in 1990 with UNLV, 17 and one now in first round games. Fresno State knocked off Cal 82 to 70. And Tom Izzo last year led his team to the national championship. Seven straight NCAA tournament wins. Welcome to Memphis, everybody. Ian Eagle, Jim Spadarco, and Fred Haver with you. And this is the final game in the South region at the Pyramid. For the number one seed, Michigan State, thinking about another national championship. They knocked off Alabama State 63 to 35, using a 26-0 run in the second half and holding Alabama State to 10 second half points to get the win. Well, I think when you look at this game initially, as you take a look at the officials, I think rebounding becomes the key ingredient today. Fresno State comes in the worst rebounding team in the WAC. Michigan State, the best in the country. Set for action as the defending national champions control the tip. Michigan State in the white. Fresno State in the blue, the number nine seeded Bulldogs. On the outside, Bell defended by Maddox. Want to welcome those of you who just watched Charlotte, Illinois. Inside cut. And Richardson had it knocked away. I mean, Tom Izzo likes to script five of his first offensive plays, and he's trying to get Richardson involved back door, and he got one right off the bat, but didn't get it to go down for him. This is going to go the other way, an offensive foul called on Fresno State. That's almost like a football coach, and there is a connection there for Tom Izzo, his roommate in college at Northern Michigan, 49ers head coach Steve Mariucci. So you know where the temperament may come from and the philosophy from Tom Izzo. And you don't hear of it too often. They like to spread the floor out, but he did say, you know, they learned from each other, those two guys, about their individual sports. Number one seeded Illinois moving on with a 79 to 61 win over Charlotte in the Midwest. Bell on a dish. And Agonye hanging in there. And the foul call. Shannon Swillis picks it up, and Anna Gagne will go to the free throw line, a chance for three. One of the things Tom Izzo thought when he was talking about his team coming into this game was he thought that Fresno State would really come out and attack on the perimeter, and two times defensively they have done just that, and two times Michigan State has answered and attacked the offensive glass with good passing and movement without the basketball. Off the miss free throw. By the way, Eli picked up the first personal foul for Fresno State, so one apiece on Eli and Swillis up front. On the outside, here's Swillis. 2-0 Michigan State with a lead just over a minute gone by first half. They're going to try to invite Swillis to shoot that 15-foot jump shot. Knocked out of bounds. Fresno State got 27 points from Demetrius Porter in their first round win over Cal, a career high. Now maybe a little push in there. Well, some of our viewers will be leaving us momentarily to see some other action from around the nation. In the Midwest, Notre Dame against Ole Miss. And in the South, Penn State taking on North Carolina. You'll be kept up to date on the progress of this game with scoring reports and highlights. Off the miss, the rebound to Richardson. Jeffries had a nice look at the basket from long range. Here's Richardson trying to find a hole. Kick out. And the senior Hudson off the mark. And Jeffries taps it over to Tito Maddox, pushing it down the floor. Maddox controls tempo and gets Fresno State its first deuce of the day. Tempo and add the word quick before it because it's a quick tempo. They want to go up and down as much as possible, Fresno State. But Tom Izzo isn't afraid to run either. You know, this Fresno State team, very unpredictable. They could come out here and because of their athleticism, go up and down the floor and keep this game close. Uh, and if they hit a couple of shots, they'll be in real good shape. Hudson the drive, knifing down the lane for two in the foul. Hudson with a chance for three.
Greg Gumbel in New York. We'll keep you updated on what happens with the top seed in the South, Michigan State against Fresno State. But right now, you're headed for Kemper Arena in Kansas City. Second round Midwest action between Notre Dame and Ole Miss. They're set to get started. Vern Lundquist and Bill Raftery are there. Thank you, Greg. We're set for the second second round game from the Midwest region in Kansas City. The Fighting Irish of Notre Dame come in with a six seed, 20 and nine, and they take on the Ole Miss Rebels, 26 wins for the season and seven defeats. That has earned them a number three seed. Arizona convincing victors over Butler University in game one. The winner of this one goes on to take on the Fighting Irish or Ole Miss in San Antonio next weekend. Vern Lundquist along with Bill Raftery, a Notre Dame team that seemed to have found itself in the first game with Troy Murphy leading the way. Well, he's so solid offensively, he attracts so much attention. It's how he handles it. Bell gives up his dribble, 15 to shoot. Here's the backdoor cut, throws it out of bounds, though. Good thought by Bell. Richardson hesitated just a little bit. The challenge of Michigan State, and here comes the step across, a little reaching in, but Swillis right there to answer big time. How about Melvin Eli? Two personal fouls. You see the Swillis block, Jerry Tarkanian keeping him in there, recognizing if they have any chance to even stay in this game, they need his post presence. They do, especially at the offensive end where he's pretty quick with the basketball. Jeffries, the former Arkansas Razorback. And here's Porter, the senior. And a whistle foul assessed underneath on Aloysius Anagonye, bumping bodies with Eli. Three-pointer, but this time going to the tin. Let's check the starting lineups. On the left, you've got the Irish. They are not a deep team. Murphy, Humphrey, Graves, Inglesby, and Carroll on the right. Reed, Lockhart, Sanders, Holmes, and Flanagan for all this. And here is Armin Kateo. Thanks, Vern. For your people at home, you don't want to check the color contrast on your set. Yes, indeed. Notre Dame is wearing green uniforms, brand new ones. The last time they wore it was 1989, and Mike Bray said, a school official said to him, you know what, you might want to think about these green uniforms. Mike said, I like the idea. He said, we're going to wear them because we won the Big East. And he said, it's a wonderful thing. And he said, he thinks it's going to be a little luck of the Irish today. Burn back to you. All right, they won their first round game back in 1989. And so the green is back. Ed Corbett, Tony Green, speaking of appropriate <laughs> officials for this game, and Lonnie Dixon round out the triumvirate of officials. Mike Bray in his first year as head coach of the Irish, five years at Delaware prior to that. He was an assistant to Mike Krzyzewski at Duke for eight years, and his counterpart coaching his alma mater, Rod Barnes, in his third season as the head coach of Ole Miss. And the tip controlled by Jason Flanagan of Ole Miss. And ND goes, Minute, minute, burn. Martin Inglesby picks up Jason Flanagan. Left side it goes to Holmes. Now the entry pass for Raheem Lockhart up with a left handed shot. And it's cleared by Ryan Humphrey of Notre Dame. That's not a good sign. If he catches it down there, he could load it up on you. Lockhart, Humphrey tries to take it off the dribble and loses control. Rod Barnes, 35 years of age, played at Ole Miss. He was an all-SEC guard for the Rebels in 1988. Played there for 84 and 82, 88. Was an assistant coach to Rob Evans. He's now the head coach at Arizona State before being tapped for the job three years ago. Holmes off the pass, and uh, Troy Murphy clears the rebound. Averaging a double-double again this year. Uh, here's a free travel. Nice pass, and you got to put it down right away. And that's one thing uh, the Irish will do. They're an opportunity break team, but you must get up on them in the early because they shoot the three so well, Vern. Notre Dame losing its final regular season games and then losing badly in the first round of the uh, Big East tournament. But uh, they came in and looked extraordinarily adept in their first round victory against the Xavier. I think they were glad to get away. Everybody knew their plays and knew where to locate Murphy. They go deep to Lockhart again. That's not healthy, at least for Notre Dame. It sure is for that guy. Raheem is such a tough out down in the box. He loves to go left, obviously, to the right shoulder. Raheem Lockhart at 6'8", 255. He's alone in that low post, and he gets the first basket of the game. Now, here's David Graves back in the starting lineup for the second consecutive game. Murphy goes back and gets it as Reed went for the steal. Not a good gamble. Turns the numbers in, the, in Notre Dame's favor. Graves was perfect for the field the other day. Seven of seven misses the shot. Murphy misses the putback. Here comes Ole Miss. Flanagan. Guarded by Inglesby. 
Justin Reed, number 23, 6'8 freshman. Newcomer of the year in the SEC, doesn't get the shot. Battle for the rebound, Humphrey. And Reed took a little shot in the head. Here's Carroll. He's short with a shot, but it goes right to Murphy, who is fouled as he goes up with the footback. Okay, thus far, the uh, Mississippi on the offensive end got what they want. A little, a little raggy early here, yeah. just not getting in the spots, getting that high low that they coordinate so well. Troy Murphy will go to the line. He had an off day shooting. He was one of the rare ones who did the other night. As uh, Humphrey Carroll and Graves led the way, Murphy was. 6 of 17 from the field, but he kept the free throw and Notre Dame is on the field. One of the great strokes, too. It's interesting, Raheem Lockhart of Ole Miss and Murph, Troy Murphy, went to Pete Newell's camp, big man camp, got to know one another, and competed one-on-one -on -one and two-on-two, -two, and both felt they came away. Great respect for one another and learning so much about the game. At big man camp held in Hawaii in the summer, they worked against each other for three hours a day. They were, of course, uh, two of several big men who were there. Murphy yesterday looked over at his teammate David Graves, who's not quite as big, and said, "You need to go to that." <laughs> I don't think it'll work for David. He's a shooter. They're Stay gonna, the going to go low to Lockhart again. Look at him prowling down low, side to side. Now Reed peers inside. They go back outside to Sanders. So if this continues, I think you'll see the zone a little earlier. This is too easy. Yeah, right Murphy, here. Murphy on Lockhart, and Lockhart's had his way establishing that low post position. Long shot, not there. Humphrey goes up and gets it away from Lockhart. That's the one thing Lockhart doesn't propel upward uh, quickly. And Murphy's trying to load up on the box. 2-2 game, alley -oop. Murphy. Nope. Tipped, and here comes Flanagan for Ole Miss. Great balance. Now they look inside for Lockhart again. Sanders. From the corner, Justin Reed for two. He's got to work on that this summer. He's a terrific slasher, guy that can put it on the floor and do some creative things, and around the rim he's tough, but the jump shot he's got to work on. Reed, a 6'8 freshman from Jackson, Proline High School. Humphrey puts it on the floor, far away. Nope. Mm. Notre Dame is 0 for 6, and they hit everything in sight with the exception of Murphy the other day. Now here's Reed off the glass. Rebound Matt Carroll. David Graves. Engelsby runs the show very sound. Gets them into their flow. Here's where Humphrey's got to dominate in the low post area. 0 for 7. He is struggling too. A little case of the nerves, huh? Yeah, I think so. Now Humphrey's guarding Lockhart. Murphy a little slow getting out on Reed. Wow. Guys are struggling. Breezy in here. <laughs> I got a chill. Pass me that blanket. Come on, guys. Warm it up. Duke, if you look back to 91-92, they won their first championship at Indianapolis, won the next one in Minneapolis. Last year, Michigan State won theirs, and indeed, guess where the final four is this year? As Swillis is off the mark. It's not an essay question, huh? it's just an answer. Yeah, that's Minneapolis, here we go. I don't know if you've heard the term rhetorical. 9-5, Spartans. Here's a pull-up, and Bell knocks it down. He has been struggling over the last couple of weeks from long range in particular. A guy who was looked upon to lead this basketball team. Maddox straight away three off the rim. Thomas the rebound on the defensive end. Zach Randolph, as mentioned earlier, has checked in for Michigan State. And Bell with an errant toss out of bounds. You know, Hudson got his foot tripped up a little bit on the way down the floor, and that's why that went over his head. Marcus Taylor comes into the game, replacing David Thomas. So Taylor and Bell playing together in the backcourt. You know, a tough role for Charlie Bell to become the on-floor leader for Mateen Cleves. Both players out of Flint, Michigan, along with former Spartan Morris Peterson. And Melvin Eli comes back into the game, replacing Mustafa Al-Sayed. Eli with two personal fouls. Izzo said with Bell Ion that there may have been, he may have been putting a little too much pressure on himself back about six weeks ago. And he's just got to re 
reload and regroup a little bit. Here's Jeffries, yet to get involved offensively. Eli, baseline drive, and a dunk. One thing about Eli is he's very good footwork, and he's real good down below, and what they try to do with him defensively is push him out a little further. Freshman to freshman, Taylor to Randolph, off the rim, but followed home by Bell, a great rebounding guard at six foot three. Randolph just ran over Eli, too. That could have gone the other way. And some action inside. Eli and Randolph got tied up. And it will be the Marion Indiana native picking up the personal foul. Greg Gumbel in New York will keep tabs on what happens between Fresno State and Michigan State for you, but it is time to send you off to New Orleans to the Louisiana Superdome for more second round action out of the South region. Penn State and North Carolina set to do battle. Let's send you to New Orleans and join Jim Nance and Billy Packer. Welcome to the Superdome in New Orleans, Penn State and North Carolina. Fighting it out for the right to travel to Atlanta and the regional and the Sweet 16 to take on Temple. Already a winner here today against last year's finalist, Florida. Hello, friends. Jim Nance and Billy Packer. What's it going to take for Penn State here today? Mojo, Jim. We need so some mojo. We need a good game here. <laughs> we really do. I think what we're going to see from Penn State is a guy that uh, a senior situation. We have Klein Hurd who's been an outstanding performer for Penn State throughout his career. 16 of 10 the other day, he's had 10 double doubles this year. And I think that his explosiveness inside could prove a real problem. And there's that wink of success for the North Carolina Big Men. Maybe he knows something, who knows? Here's the All-American for the Tar Heels, Forte. The 17th consecutive consensus All-American in Tar Heel history. Co-ACC Player of the Year with Shane Battier. A brilliant performer, Can shoot from the outside, the medium range jumper and take it to the hole. The coaches, Matt Doherty of North Carolina, Jerry Don of Penn State, their thoughts on this matchup today. I think we've got to push the ball. We've got to create or, or set the tempo uh, for this game. And because it was smaller, I think that's where we've got to score uh, a lot of our points before they set the defense. They're such good shooters, uh, so they're very, very dangerous. We have to contest their shots and box out and chase long rebounds. They're an experienced group. They're older, they're, they're strong, they're tougher. Um, so I think uh, we're going to be in for a fight. The starting lineups, the Crispin brothers from Pittman, New Jersey in the backcourt for the Nittany Lions on the Carolina side. Again, Julius Peppers will start in place of Chris Lang. And Bonnie Bernstein is with us here in New Orleans as well. Bonnie, take it away. Jim, I think you'd be hard pressed to find a Penn State player who wants this game more than Titus Ivory, the North Carolina native. Always dreamed of playing for the Tar Heels, but never got a look. Now, as a team's top defender, he draws a pretty tough assignment in Joe Forte, but Ivory said to me. Revenge has been a long time coming, and today is the day, Jim. All right. Well, you know, Billy, you could almost argue this is a program that way back in 1954 with its star Jesse Arnell went to the Final Four, but not much that, in between. Not much in between. And if Penn State could somehow find a way to beat mighty North Carolina here today, could be the biggest win in the program's history or right up there with what happened in 54. What do you think? Well, it'd be certainly right up there. Uh, it wouldn't match 54 because that's a final four. But they had fewer games to get to that. Absolutely. Yeah, back then. But one of the things that you also have to think about this team, they have beaten two number one seeds. They've beaten Illinois and Michigan State. That Michigan State game just a week or so ago. And so that they are really capable of going up, up against an outstanding club and doing well. Only two teams that are alive in this tournament right now have beaten two number ones. And that would be Penn State, as you mentioned, with wins over Illinois and Michigan State. In Arizona, which advanced to the Sweet 16 earlier today, wins against Illinois. They actually split and, this year. And Stanford. And also Stanford. It's a Penn State program that also knocked off a number two in Kentucky at Rupp Arena at the start of the season. A team that wiped out North Carolina at home in Chapel Hill. That, so yeah. if you're starting to look for matchups, they're three and two, both of them against common opponents. I tell you, talk to the Tar Heels yesterday at the shoot around. That really got their attention because Kentucky beat them up pretty good at Chapel Hill. And like you said, Penn State won at Lexington. The Tar Heels very aware of that. Forte drives, baseline pull up, slides off the rim, and there's the rebound by Klein Hurst. Forte getting the shot that he really likes. He has not been looking to shoot as much so far in this uh, NCAA tournament that he normally does. Titus Ivory and all Carolina underneath. Forte, as you pointed out the other night, a very good rebounder. 
He has 36 rebounds in the last three games playing guard. Is that amazing? Mm. Carolina with an easy cruise past uh, Princeton. Wow, and right over the top. No stopping that with Haywood from Capel. Carolina over Princeton while Penn State eliminated Providence Friday night here. Curry on Crispin. Pretty good matchup. Curry. John Crispin way short. Now Curry is not as quick as Linehan, but he's very powerful. Speaking of John Linehan, the Providence guard who was the Big East defender of the year who was uh, manned up against Joe Crispin the score leading score for Penn State Friday night and I thought that Crispin did a nice job being patient with that getting off the ball an awful lot and wearing Linehan down at the end of the ball game bad turnover by North Carolina sloppy play right off the foot of uh, Curry and Crispin blows by him nice pass Klein Hurd should have been ready there's Haywood who is a tremendous shot blocker number one shot blocker for the year in, in uh, North Carolina history going over the top look at the going to Haywood right over the top of Smith and he's catching the ball easily that's two times now that's worked now Smith is listed at six foot eight he played a lot bigger than that the other day but right now North Carolina is thrown right over the top of his head he is going to have to get some help and maybe play behind Haywood get somebody to double down Titus Ivory tough shot Rebound out to Haywood. Well, you really notice the difference in size out here in this game. Haywood playing way above Penn State. That time over Klein Hurd. Straight man to man, Peppers down inside. Haywood with that rebound. He only had one rebound against Princeton. And Haywood seems to have monster games in the NCAA tournament or not much at all. Oh, there he's not looking for the ball. Curry throws it away. Haywood turn. Now Haywood has to understand. Curry more than likely would rather pass than shoot. Haywood already tired. Ivory drives right past Capel and Haywood. Haywood breathing very heavily early in this ball game. Bad pass by Curry. Crispin almost picked it off. Capel three from the corner buries it. Six for six threes in the first round of the ACC tournament against Clemson. Capel very underrated as he stands outside at six foot seven, six foot eight. He really gets good looks. Push off by Crispin against Curry. Just knocked him away. First shot in around the world for Joe Crispin and uh, knocks it down rather easily. He was not able to get that kind of dribble penetration against Linehan. As I said, uh, Curry nowhere near as quick. Capel. Second time, no, but it's Haywood really dominating inside early. Boy, it's kind of amazing. That time, Klein Hurd did not block him out. He was looking to run long on the play. He cannot afford to leave underneath the basket against a guy like Haywood. He may beat him down floor, but the problem is Haywood's going to get the rebound. Klein Hurd tries to challenge Haywood, and he swats it away. Second time already in this game. Beautiful behind the back dribble by Forte. He loves that pull-up jumper. He's got some kind of soft touch. Lang's going to come in for Haywood. Haywood exhausted here early in the ballgame, trying to get his second win. Early intensity by Carolina. The jump in front by seven. Put it up on the baseline. And a rebound grabbed by Damon Jackson. Here's Maddox the other way. And traveling is called. And Maddox keeps the pressure on you offensively, especially in the open floor. And Jerry Tarkanian not happy with the call. Let's see if he takes an extra step. Yeah, that's a good call. That's a good call. It's a foul, and it looks like a foul to everybody in this building because they're up high looking down on it. That's why you had that reaction, but it was a good call from the officials. Both teams are under 40% from the field as Adam Ballinger checks in. The sophomore. Michigan State 20, Fresno State 11. Travis DeMambi on the floor for Fresno State. And a quick whistle. Personal foul on Damon Jackson. That's his first. Tonight on 60 Minutes, how does a Florida bean picker get to live like a king? By going to law school and becoming one of America's richest lawyers tonight on 60 Minutes. Jason Richardson at the free throw line. 17 fouls on Fresno State. So the Spartans in the bonus with 10.57 to play first half. It's incredible. That's how aggressive they are at the offensive end going after it. And they do pick up some fouls also with the rebounding power that they have. And they can put up points in a hurry. Richardson had 14 points in the first round win over Alabama State. He's got four so far today. And the Spartans doubling up the Bulldogs here in the first half. Maddox using the screen. 
corner jump to Manby. Wow, Jackson went up high and he banks it home. Not only up high, but also at an angle where he avoided any contact on any of the defensive rebounders. A crossover by Bell. I found the opening, but the window was not kind. Sometimes the Michigan State team, it looks as if there's seven or eight guys going after the glass, especially on the offensive end. Tito Maddox comes in averaging 13 and a half points, eight assists per game. He had 10 assists in the first round victory, but nine turnovers, a little bit out of control. In fact, a lot out of control at times. There's Maddox, hits the deck, and scooped up by Richardson. Unfortunately, a turnover on cue for Maddox. Hudson clears it for Bell using the screen. Nice play defensively. Swillis on a takeaway. Uncontested, he'll come soaring in for the two-handed stuff. That's a 6-7 guy doing that. What footwork to get around. He was beaten a little bit on the dribble, off the dribble, and reacted very, very quickly. Four turnovers for Charlie Bell with just over 10 minutes gone by. Eli back in the game, so Tom Izzo and company has to contend with him down on the offensive blocks in particular. 22 to 15, Michigan State. Eli has to watch that foul, though. He has playing with two right now. Here's Hudson turning on Swillis. Richardson calls out a play. Oh, that's a walk. Good call. And Richardson got caught. He was thinking of handing it off and then turned to the basket and took the extra step. CBS Sports coverage of the entire NCAA basketball tournament is interactive through Ultimate TV. Spartans 22, the Bulldogs 15 with 9.27 to go. First half here in Memphis. So they just have to keep the pace up Fresno State and they cannot turn the basketball over. That's going to be a downfall for them. They must get good shots every possession. They may be trying to feed the post, a kickball. They'll reset the shot clock. And Fresno State will hold on to it. Here's Eli on the outside for Demambi. Fresno State with its first NCAA tournament win since 1982 when they beat West Virginia 50 to 46. As Willis, ball movement to the corner. Fading away, Jackson. And the uncontested board for Richardson. Pretty good ball movement, just didn't catch the basketball. Pull up, pop. Richardson can't get the three to go down. He was knocking those down in the first round victory over Alabama State. Spent a lot of time this summer working on that jump shot. Here's Porter for Jackson. Demand the open look. Side rim on a three. Eli trying to create some space. Hook shot, no, but a foul. One of the places Eli is so effective is when he gets that basketball down low. And keep in mind, they're trying to root him off the blocks. Tom Izzo mentioned that before the game. Don't let him catch the ball three or four feet from the basket. He works for a rebound and gets a second chance opportunity. See the free throw numbers. Michigan State now seven of eight. And Eli headed to the free throw line. Six points, three boards. Fresno State is 0 of seven from three point range. Eli gets the roll on the first attempt. Jerry Tarkanian, a lot of questions about his future at Fresno State. He says he'd love to come back, but it becomes a question of health for him if his health permits it. And at 70 years of age, you begin to think about those elements of your life. He loves the game of basketball, though, since he's not a golfer, or fisherman, or anything. So this is his life, and that's what he wants to do. No other hobbies. He's a gym rat. Upstairs. And Jackson couldn't catch it. The ball was too low. Richardson so dangerous in the open court. Randolph gathers in and banks it home, plus a foul. Now the question becomes, who are they going to get on that foul? I believe it's Eli. That's the and one they were trying to avoid. Number three on Eli. The off the rebound action. Yeah, look at the strength now. Watch this, the pop. He pops him a little bit, he falls, but there is contact, and Randolph's allowed to do that. Once you get the ball in the offensive class, you can create a little contact to get yourself going towards the basket. So Eli is forced to the bench with 8.15 to play, first half. Randolph unable to complete the three-point play, but Stafa Al-Sayed has checked in. Michigan State up by eight. Demampi, feed to the post. 
Al Syed with a ball fake. Here's Porter using the Swillis screen down the lane and a foul. That's the seventh on Michigan State, so they're going to shoot regardless. Fresno State will, but one of the things they have to do with this unit on the floor, Fresno State, is continue to look for penetration just like that. Try to slice through some of the seams and get something going towards the basket. Second foul on Jason Richardson and Porter at the free throw line, 77%. Now talking about the man known as Tart. And you talked about the fact that he really doesn't have anything else that he's interested in other than basketball that would take up his time. He actually grew up in Euclid, Ohio. And he was working for the National Biscuit Company there, bringing a lunchbox to work every day. And that was his incentive, not to have a job like that. He wanted to get a job that did not involve a lunchbox. Well, he got one. He also got a job that involved a lot of victories. Right now, his team is down. Uh, in Philadelphia to Indiana, and then to Georgia in 83 in a regional final, and then 84, probably the most disappointing loss of his entire life, is when that great team with Michael Jordan and Sam Perkins lost to Indiana down in Atlanta. It would be Jordan's last game. He would leave after his junior year, and Doherty's last. He was a senior. Peppers again from the inside. North, North Carolina doing something that very few teams are capable of doing, and that is throwing right over the top, interior-wise, of the zone. Oh, John Crispin got it back. He's the sophomore. His brother, number three, is the senior. They've talked about how they realize that one loss and uh, playing together that could come to an end, never be on the same team again, except in some kind of old man's league, maybe. Somewhere down the road. Inside nice. go to Klein Hurd. Now, North Carolina really on the scouting report, you can tell, said be aware of Joe Crispin with a shot. So Joe understands that, and he's looking to throw the pass. Lang flips it. Beautiful shot. This is just an inside game against an outside game. And normally, that favors the inside team. Joe Crispin, corner, three-point shot. shot. Well, he hasn't had it from the outside here. But Jim, that's a big shot. If Penn State's going to stay in this one, they can make it up with threes. They can make up some of this lack of inside strength. Lang, the junior from Gastonia, North Carolina, makes it a double-digit lead for the Tar Heels. And so far, defensively, Penn State's Klein Hurd not able to get to the spots. Penn State 0 for 5 from 3, make it 1 for 6. Joe Crispin bangs it home. That could be the difference maker. And if you're North Carolina, you have got to go out and play him almost man to man when you're in that zone because he has unlimited range. And that is saved by Klein Hurd. Got it over to Titus Ivory. Good job here pushing the ball up the floor. The trailer. Klein Hurd to Smith and one. Isn't it amazing? Since Haywood went out of the game, Jim, North Carolina lost, has lost all its presence down in the paint. He's going to come back in now. That takes away those plays that uh, Penn State's been able to make inside. First foul on Lang as uh, Haywood comes in for him. And Max Owens, a senior, also will check in here for the Tar Heels. Capel to the bench. And there's where. No, it's going to be Peppers to the bench, Jim. Capel's going to swift, uh, switch okay. over and now move up to the forward spot. So it'll be Haywood and Capel on the inside. Tyler Smith, Jr., Lake Bluff, Illinois at 6'8". It's going to be a big game for him to try to somehow neutralize Haywood and Peppers and some of those big bodies from North Carolina today. So is this guy going to have to come in for the Nittany Lions and deliver Marcus Banta sophomore of Springfield Ohio. I think a nice move by Jerry Dunn here to try to get just a little bit more size in the game so that North Carolina can't go over the top to Haywood. Forte turns the corner beautifully. And Banta Good comes block right out. in. Yeah had position with that. Joe to John brother to brother. Mine heard they say take it. He's and he a gets it from there. He can pull Haywood out. Penn State on an eight-nothing run. Penn State now starting to pack things back inside. Take Look it. Haywood, no that's going to be no basket, basket interference. Definitely no basket. Haywood was up in the air. That ball was in the cylinder, and he got a piece of it. Looked like it was coming back down. It may have been good anyway. It may have, but you'll see right here without question, Haywood touches that ball in the cylinder. Yep. 
Ningle. And Mike Gray expected it because he felt Xavier. They were a little sloppy in the second half. Great post pass to Swanigan by Murphy. Harold Swanigan. Mike Gray telling us that he put him into the starting lineup middle of the season because he wanted someone who would do by example what he wanted the other players to do. Now, away from the ball, three-second violation. And Lockhart was ready, but they couldn't get the ball. He's talking to Sanders there saying, get it in here when I'm dominating like this. I think I'd pay attention to him, huh? Uh, With those shoulders. Inglesby picked up by Jason Harrison. This may be the first time Inglesby's taller than the guy guarding him. He'll be wanting to post up. Nice denial again, this time by Holmes. Turnover, Harrison's got it. This is left side. And the foul is going to be sending Jason Flanagan to the line. Matt Carroll picks up the foul. Tonight on 60 Minutes, how does a Florida bean picker get to live like a king? By going to law school and becoming one of America's richest lawyers. That's tonight on 60 Minutes. This game doesn't have a feel yet. It's not a flow to it. I agree. The guy's not able to get any rhythm going. I think the zone has thrown Ole Miss off just a little bit. As Raheem may be still being yo-yoed with the back trouble. Lockhart sits, Sanders sits, John Gunn is back on the floor, and Aaron Harper, number five, will throw it in for Ole Miss. Jason Harrison, a starter last year, comes off the bench as the sixth man this year, but uh, plays almost equal minutes in the game with Jason Flanagan, though they are both on the floor right now. Here's Gunn. He walked. I thought so, too. Yeah, not a good out, not a good play by him. They had a situation with Murphy, with Harper being guarded by him. They should have taken advantage with the dribble drive, and then he switched back to Gunn. Inbound pass to Swanigan, and Torian Jones is on the floor. And it is, doesn't it, get a lot of minutes. Now they're trying to get him into the swing here. Look at this, nice confidence going to the rim there. A pretty good defensive play by Jason Flanagan. Give you an idea of how uh, thin this bench is. Dorian Jones played three minutes the other night. Swanigan played eight. And that was it for bench play for uh, Mike Gray's Notre Dame team. And he got right in the mix the other night. Took a jumper, went to the rim. They got a post feed if they want it. Uh, tough angle. A little struggle with the post feed there by Inglesby, who's been sound all year. Almost seven assists to two turnovers. That's pretty solid basketball. Matt Carroll is going to give Inglesby a rest, and they'll move Jones to the point. Inglesby, who uh, averaged almost 39 minutes a game. I mean, he, he really doesn't look fatigued when he's out there. Oh. Just a lot of energy. They, say he was going to get, they didn't have a walk when he took, got in the tub. At the hotel, the, yeah. The ups and salts, huh? <laughs> yeah, that hit the back of the uh, basket, I believe. And Notre Dame gets it anyhow. Carroll, Graves, Jones, Murphy, and Swanigan on the floor. Now look at that rest. <laughs> Quick rest for Inglesby. He's back on the floor, but this time he replaced Carroll. A little pit stop, and I may have set a record at Indy. 6-16 to go, first half of play. 21-19. Now the idea of pressure is to gnaw away. You may not get one right away. Flanagan do a nice job turning the dribbler. So important. Now they're fronting Troy Murphy again. Jason Holmes on it for now. And he's done a great job, I think. Inglesby. 5.54 to go. Shot clock down at 12. Good cut by Murphy. Cut. Absolutely, the adjustment in the air. Gets the miss and draws the foul, I believe. Yep. That was great patience on the pass, too, by Graves. But Murphy, effort alert on the step to the goal. And my boy's not real happy about that particular call. Foul on Raheem Lockhart, his first. And Murphy at the line. There's Troy out of Del Barton High School. Up in the Marstown area. Our son went to school with him, so I got to see him play. Outstanding performer. Father Luke, Father John, sent a lot of kids to Notre Dame, by the way. One of the student body. Troy Murphy gets one more free throw, the second of two, 21-20. And Murphy, who hits 76% from the line, misses the second that could have given Notre Dame a tie. 
Ole Miss in the white, the third seed in the uh, Midwest with 26 wins. They have led much of the first half, but not by much. And the winner of the previous game here, Arizona took control in the second half of their game against Butler. They have advanced to the Sweet 16 in San Antonio. And the winner of this game will go down there as well. Lou Olson in his 18th season saw his team really play well defensively in the matchup against Butler. And they won it convincingly with a strong second half performance. Harold Swanigan has picked up his third ball. Raheem Lockhart is doing very well, yeah, Bill. Well, the problem, I think, with O'Day, it started earlier where Lockhart was getting catches on the box, just turning and finishing. That time, Swanigan, trying to deny, ends up getting his third personal foul. They countered that. Notre Dame out of the gate, not really getting a flow going. Eventually got Murphy a couple of touches where he make the deep shot. Then he eventually stepped way out and made a three. Lockhart at 80% in the early going. He really struggles there. You, you, you know, you've got to put your gloves on your hands when he's shooting free throws. It could hurt your fingers. There's Ryan Humphrey. And they've got to take advantage of Murphy with the match with home. When he comes out high, I think he could dominate low if they move Humphrey up. And Humphrey picks up. I believe that's the second foul on Lockhart. And on the pass, too. Or did they get... Now they got a manual wave. On the, 32. on the scrape from the top. So Ryan Humphrey's going to go to the line where uh, he does not own bragging rights. No, it's a little bit of an adventure. Former McDonald's all American to Oklahoma and his sister now students at ND. There you go. His sister is here. He was telling us yesterday he's got a mini clan. Mm -hmm. that made the trip up from Tulsa to Kansas City. It's uh, not that long of a trip. Booker T. Washington was uh, a fine player at Oklahoma before he decided to transfer. But that is uh, evident of the kind of problems he encounters at the line. Even the family will give him a little heat on that. Yeah. <laughs> I love you, son, but oh my goodness. David Sanders with the penetration tries to get it back outside and does. Now Jason Harrison at 5'5". For the 6'8", Raheem Lockhart. Soft, huh? Yeah. You've got to make him go the other way, Ryan. You're a good student. Pay attention to the scouting report. 12 points for Raheem Lockhart. And nobody really helped on the dribble, the big guy. Somebody's got to come over and sort of sniff, see if they can rake away. Eagles begin to the corner. 4.34 to go. And that one goes. Not too bad. That's Jones confidently. I mean, he stepped in and attacked both days. Dorian Jones, the freshman from Fairless Hills, Pennsylvania. Lockhart wants it again. Way outside. Good job there, screen it off. Murphy takes off. Sanders intercepts it, it's on the floor. There's Murphy, can't control it. Ole Miss ball, pretty good hustle. Solid play by Ole Miss. Well, that's their tenacious style of play. It invigorates. They get some chances to run out. Good hustle. David Sanders contribute any way he can. Great reaction and, oh, keeping it alive. Push on Watkins when Haywood's missing, which isn't often. Peppers is right there to collect it anyway. Well, what he does, Jim, he takes up so much room and so much space with his size that he's great on his offensive rebounding. It's awful, and you're not going to move him off the spot. Lang and Forte back for Carolina. Klein Hurd checks in for the Nittany Lions. Klein Hurd's been very quiet in this ball game so far. Jerry Dunn trying to get a little bit, few minutes off that bench, keep his guys fresh because he knows North Carolina's deep. Straight man, dish inside, Peppers again, just too strong. Julius Peppers. Now, and we talked about this the other day where I thought that Peppers probably ran into the wall a little bit coming off football. Now he seems to be getting his energy back. He's got eight points for the Tar Heels. Marius Ivory not able to get much going yet. And there he hits the jumper on Forte, who's an excellent defensive player. He looks, he stares him right down. 
As much as North Carolina has dominated from the inside, the lead feels like it would be larger than three. Good job by Ivory. Goes right down on the change of dribble by Forte and takes it away from him. Ivory to the corner. Watkins hit some big shots Friday. Not this one. And Lang takes it away for the Tar Heels. Boy, grab Forte on his shirt, which is normally an intentional foul. And Penn State gets away from it. Right now, Ivory doing a good job on Forte. And then he turns it over. All loose. And Ivory in a tie up. And the arrow belongs to the Lions. Both players, two outstanding players, Ivory and Forte, both taking over it, the challenge against each other. You'll see the grabbing of the shirt right here. That's an intentional foul, not called. Well, it's been great in a lot of ways, but it's been different. You know, I think we've, uh, you'll learn that uh, that bull's on your back, that you try to downplay and you try to act like it's no big deal. I can't believe how much winning one or two more games did. I mean, the year before we were at the Final Four, got beat by Duke, and last year we won it. And, you know, it just seems like uh, wherever you go, people are hunting for you just a little bit more, especially the fans. Well, Jimmy, speaking of Duke, 1978, you went to the national championship game, falling a little bit short to Kentucky. But did you feel that the next year, that all of a sudden you had that bullseye? Absolutely. People get up for you. You know, you're not going to sneak up on anyone. And Tom is the one that stands at that people know them they're circling them on their calendar and the schedule and quite candidly it puts more pressure on his team to react to that foul called on Chappelle that's his third personal and free throws coming up for Chris Jeffries they're trying to become the sixth team to win consecutive titles you mentioned Duke back in 91 92 the last to do it Jeffrey's off the mark on the first. Taylor checks back in for Michigan State, and Chappelle will get a rest. And Jeffries will get his second toss, trying to cut the lead to single digits. Chris Jeffries, no good, and rebounded by Thomas. Walked away from the free throw line twice. Usually is one of the reasons you miss free throws is walking away and not completing the shot. Good hands. Anticipation, and here's Maddox, end to end for the slam. One of the key things for Jerry Tarkanian and company is to try to keep this to single digits, and so far he's been successful. They've played a pretty good minute and a half right now. Let's see if they can sustain it from a defensive standpoint. That's about as close as Eli's going to get to the action in this quarter, this half right here. Here's Hudson way outside. Under three minutes to play now, first half. Gives up his dribble on a bounce. And a Gagne in the post. It rims out. Follow is tipped home by Thomas. He's got some good hops in there, but he also gets the very good spots on the floor, Thomas. Very quick. Nobody boxing him out that last trip down the floor. First deuce of the day for the senior. Here's Jeffries on a cut to the rim in traffic. And he'll go to the free throw line. It's been a frustrating day so far for sophomore Chris Jeffries. And he'll shoot a pair. Let's see if he stays on the line this trip. David Thomas picks up his second foul as Jeffries connects on the first. Ole Miss, 28-27. Harper, whoops. And just a tough little play as the little guy turns the corner. Harrison's usually so solid with the basketball and a great relation between Harrison and Barnes. Good feeling, understanding, overcoming all odds to be players. Here's the catch and he'll take the extra step. Comes down and he starts moving his feet. You see the knees going up and down. Good sign that you're walking if your knees are bobbing up and down. Tenth Michigan State turnover and a 32nd timeout has been called with 2.22 left. First half, 36-28. Spartans in front. She just doesn't understand. Time. A little trapping by North Carolina. Watkins, beautiful dish. And Klein hurt, puts Penn State ahead. Jesse Klein hurt. How'd you like that pass? Uh, it's a terrific pass, and Penn State now getting momentum. North Carolina had an opportunity to seal this game early and went to their bench and didn't put Penn State away, and now they've got a real fight in their hands. 
Peppers in the lane, lost control of it. Banta seeing some big minutes here. That's the ninth turnover by Carolina. And then the turnovers are taking away the advantage they have in regard to rebounding. Ivory connects from three. Jerry Den up and clapping. And I don't blame him. His team's made a nice comeback here. Defense getting aggressive, not giving North Carolina many good shots, but Forte even can take a bad shot and make it look good. Kleinert tries to beat his man down the floor and does. On the blocks, Kleinert and Haywood comes in, but a whistle. It's going to be a foul on Haywood. That's his. Good enough pass to get it down the floor in a hurry. Here's Taylor. Pressure defense from Maddox looking for the steal. Bale on a pump fit going against bigger players. And hits the deck again. Taylor, under two minutes to play now. Hudson with the catch. Hudson leaning in, using the glass at a foul call. Their size and strength down low. They are really starting to pound as much as they possibly can. Humphrey, Inglesby, and David Graves. And Gunn has replaced Lockhart here. I think to save fouls. Yeah, absolutely. He's yep. got the one. Why not make sure he's got the whole half to play that? Right. So Lockhart sits with 16 points. Humphrey in the lane. Finally. Yeah, you know what, though? If he doesn't make it, there isn't a rebounder in sight on that high low. Right. Murphy's making the pass out top, but he has struggled. You're right. Irish first lead since they were up by one at 11 to 10. Harrison. He draws air. A nice screen down, got him free. And pressure is applied now, as you see Humphrey's basket. Nice high-low setup. Plenty of room for the pass. Angles becomes across in control with one minute remaining in the first half. Good ball moment to get an entry. Gun fronting Humphrey in the low post. Now he comes out, pops that high. And they both do good job screening their guy off, Murphy and Humphrey, but that time up short. Gun with a rebound. Timeout. Ole Miss. 45 seconds remaining in the first half. The Irish now lead by one. Four burns here and there. Play on, though. And Demambi will toss it in. And there is blood somewhere. They found blood on Anna Gagne's jersey. Now they're searching for exactly who it was. And it appears to be Chris Jeffries. On the knee of Jeffries, they'll work on that. They're wiping off the jersey of Anna Gagne on the other side of the floor before we resume play with a minute 21 to go in the first half. Neither team has shot the ball all that well. Fresno State in particular, 9 of 30. Maddox. Off the drive. Jackson on a dump down. Here's Swillis looking for position. Swillis, good use of the dribble, and tapped home. Maddox getting a piece. One of the few times we've seen any Fresno State player. Good try on the sidelines with the steal. And we've seen a situation occur where a guy's been able to dribble, but here's where the flood comes up. A lot of scramble. And Jeffries. Now Matt Carroll back in. And now they should, I would take Lockhart out. That's what I thought they were going to do, but they do leave him in. I would go at Raheem. And why not? See who he matches up with. If it's Humphrey, get Humphrey down in the box. And here comes Carroll. Shot clock is off. Well, they got great denial all over. This could be a bad, just a solid defensive trip. Mm. Time call by Notre Dame. They stopped the clock with 17.6 left first half. 37 to 30, the Spartans leading the Bulldogs here in second round action from the South. And coming up Monday on CBS, it's worse than an annoying father-in-law. 
losing your annoying father-in-law. The manhunt begins on an all-new King of Queens Monday on CBS. Jerry Tarkanian, experienced in these situations, but the headaches can still occur. There are constant, I think, in the world and life of a coach. No matter how many times you've been to the NCAA tournament, Bell way off. Not a good shot by Bell, even though it was a quick release for him, but the other part. Get him a touch on Lockhart. Kirkland on Murphy. Ten seconds to go. Here's Inglesby. Graves, it hits his foot. Five seconds remaining. Murphy, no. Got a chance. We've reached halftime. It has been a struggle for everybody except Raheem Lockhart. In the first round game, 12 points. In the first half this afternoon, 16 points. But despite his 16-point effort, Notre Dame comes from behind at the end, and they're up 29-28. We go to Army Cafe. Arcanian stood up at the other end of the floor and put up the index finger to signal one last shot. So they're happy with where it is right now. They don't want this to be a 9 or 10-point differential going into the half. Maddox taking his time, and Taylor backing off. See if he tries to go by somebody out front and kick to the wings. Seven to shoot. Maddox off the dribble. Shot clock winding down, side of the rim. Three seconds left. Down to one. Taylor shot at the buzzer, no good. And that is the end of the first half. With Michigan State leading Fresno State, 37 to 30. All right now, let's check in with Brett Hamer. Tom Izzo's team in front by seven at halftime. And CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship will continue after this message and a word from your local station. Jossie will sit for a moment. What a tough time for Penn State to lose a player like that. Mega Casey is in. Beautiful. Joe Crispin hit this one last time. Too strong with that one. Tyler Smith, though, keeps it alive. John Crispin up high with it over Haywood. Haywood just snags it away from Mega Kesey. Well, Joe was screaming for his brother to throw that one cross court. He was ready for another one of his jump shots. Peppers. Ivory tries to come down on him, and it's taken away by the Lions. Final minute and 15 of the half. Tyler Smith up ahead. Waiting, waiting. No call. And Haywood it's continues to own the, the middle. But what it is right now is the Penn State defense has really frustrated North Carolina. Forte hasn't had many shots. Matter of fact, hasn't had many looks. Forte over Crispin. Don't know if that was a good shot. Capel, though, got it back. Pures it. Jason Capel. Now, North Carolina, Jim, the last two baskets they've had were shots that they didn't really even want to take. And put Carolina back in front. Ivory. There's a 11 second differential on the two clocks. Ivory. Oh, beautiful shot. Lions lead by one. You know, he is a player who may not be the most gifted athletically, but gets it done as well as anybody his size in the country. Back and forth we go. Timeout Carolina. EA Sports presents Singular at the Half, sponsored by Singular, the wireless company that believes in the value of self-expression. Hi, everyone. Welcome once again to our studios in New York and to Singular at the Half. Uh, what's going on in Louisiana Superdome? We'll tell you right now. Penn State and North Carolina are in the final minute. Let's take you there now. Jim Nance and Billy Packer. State leads by one final seconds of the first half. Nittany Lions were down 11 early and fought back. Some big outside shooting by Joe Crispin and Titus Ivory. Carolina looking for the last shot. Curry with 10 actually gets it to Haywood. Terrific dish with the left hand by Curry. Haywood has 10 points and nine rebounds. Five seconds, Joe Crispin. He'll pull up for the jumper. For the lead at the half. And North Carolina goes to the locker room leading by one. North Carolina 40, Penn State 39. 